If I can just bring everyone's attention to uh, to note that we're live streaming now. Thank you. And welcome everyone to the meeting, uh, which is a, a short but important one. Uh, there are no apologies for absence, I believe. Is that yeah? Can we add um, Councillor Coburn, please? Even is, is he online? No, no. Councillor Coburn, no. Um, terms of reference for noting. Can the committee note the updated terms of reference? And for any questions, obviously, there are no items of urgent business. Do members have any interest they wish to declare? No new interests. So, um, so we'll, we'll go into a private session if that's appropriate at the right point, won't we? Um, deputations, none received. Unrestricted minutes of the previous meeting held on the 4th of September. Can we agree those? I won't go through them, but has anyone got any issues, first of all? No, can we agree? Okay, excellent. If I could just refer to the um, actions tracker, which are, most items are now announced as completed. But I note that we uh, have a, an action on the, the head of SEND to report back on the development of performance and things like that. Now, we didn't set a specific date at that point because um, uh, the, you know, the workload and everything like that. But if I could ask uh, if we chase just to, not chase, but if we could just inquire when now that they expect to be able to report, because that is now yes, six months or so, isn't it? Okay, great. Can we note that then, unless there's any other observations? or come, Okay, thank you very much. Which then brings me, unless I rush through it too fast, to item eight, the planned internal works contract. And um, I think uh, Sinead Burke is going to introduce this online. Is that Hello, right? So um, obviously this is very, we, there is, can I just say before we welcome Sinead, uh, if I could just say that um, uh, obviously we've already seen the, uh, the, 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 um, the, the, the program for this and the uh, uh, previous sort of report setting out how, uh, you know, the, the, the basics of this, uh, but we're now here for a detailed decision. And obviously it's a really important issue isn't it thank you very much it, in, indeed thank you councillor and and thank you also for this rescheduled um time uh, because i appreciate the last meeting there was there was an a uh, clash of the programs this is quite an important program uh, or contract that we're letting um so it's called planned internal works and it's for housing and so what this contract covers is uh works to the the, the internal of tenants homes which we are uh, as a council responsible for so uh, the areas of responsibility that we have inside somebody's home is replacement kitchens replacement bathrooms uh, the electrical services the heating services um, and we also anticipate that there might be minor fire safety upgrade works and typically that's um, compartmentation between the properties and also ensuring uh, properties have the right smoke and heat alarms and, and sometimes uh, um, energy efficiency upgrade works uh, potentially um, in the home as well. So it's quite important work um, to, to, uh, to residents. What we are proposing is that the contract um, would be a, a two, two to three year contract. Um, so we've procured this via an external framework where they um they have set up contracts uh, for this type of work um and what we're proposing is that this is two years where we would let work so we're, we're proposing to have a call-off contract and the third year where we could complete out the works uh the total value uh, would be up to eight million um pounds over that time um and so um uh oh sorry we, you can see that we've um mentioned in the recommendation that we've got a contractor C uh, that we have um, planned to issue the contract to. Um, this is a direct award call-off process that we're using. And the reason for contractor C is the, the process that we use was actually a little bit long. And unfortunately, it's been challenging to, uh, to get a contractor for this work. Um, contractor A, we approached on one framework, uh, declined the price for the works. Uh, contractor B did price for the works, but we had it reviewed by um, a QS, a cost consultant, um, and it was deemed not value for money. Uh, and then we approached contractor C um, and they offered a, a set of prices which, which were deemed by our, by our quantity surveyors um, to, to offer value for money. And so we're, we're proposing that we, um, that we let the contract 
um, to this contractor C. Um, there's some information in the in the report about how we identified the properties. Essentially, it's in line with what we've called our seven year program in our asset management strategy. And so we're working through this sequentially. Uh, the program was supposed to start in 2020, which is the most unfortunate of years to try and start anything. Um, obviously, uh, we did not do internal works in 2020 or indeed in 2021. Uh, it was deemed you know, too much of a health risk to be doing this kind of work in people's homes during the COVID pandemic. Um, so this type of work generally takes three to four weeks uh, where there would be a lot of operatives in and out of somebody's home. Um, and with the COVID pandemic ongoing, that it just wasn't possible to do that. Uh, in 2022, uh, planned internal works were restarted um, at, uh, at a fairly big programme, one-off programme at Lincoln Court. Um, and this is a, a follow-on um, from that, you know, the next phase. Um, of, of internal works. As I said, we'd hoped to start it earlier, but we had challenges in, in securing uh, the right kind of prices um, from the from the industry. Um, so we've been out doing surveys. Um, we do um, look at properties in year one. We, we offer residents a survey and we identify what we call qualifying properties. And we have a range of um, predefined rules about what qualifying is, which are all in line with the decent homes. Um, rules around age and and condition. Um, there's uh, we we may also will will continue with year two and onwards as long as the value of the contract um, is is still there because obviously we've a bit of catch up to do. Um, there's some there's some information in the report also on uh, alternatives rejected. I, I won't talk through those in detail unless I can take questions at the end um, if that's deemed uh, interesting. Uh, there's also risk assessment. Um, the, the contractors have also offered, um, as you'll see quite a few noted, um, social value benefits um, around uh, this work. A lot of it is around um, local supply chain, local um, trades uh, and, um, and apprenticeships. There's quite a bit of apprenticeships uh, on this scheme. Um, and um, that's essentially, I suppose, the key, the key uh, details of it. Um, it it's, a fairly, it's a fairly simple contract fairly simple uh, procurement process, um, but quite important work. Um, if, if that's a sufficient um, summary, I can I can take questions. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments from members? Councillor Woodley? I think we might want to go into the exempt um, meeting with some questions if I'm not preempting. Yeah. Uh, I can ask non-exempt questions first. Um, my kind of particular interest, I think, is around the opportunity to do energy efficiency, uh, tackle damp and mould at the same time as putting in some of this, this better um, homes, you know, kitchens, et cetera, and, and how that aligns with the apprenticeships and, and sort of um, supporting apprentices with green okay. skills. I'm not entirely clear how many apprentices apprenticeships we're looking at it, it seems that you're confident that we're offering um a good offer but, but i couldn't quite see a, a sort of a, a number there um i'm just wondering in terms of the costs and the general challenge we've got in our stock um how sort of an offer that is in terms of, of, of mitigating energy efficiency hello to whoever's in your background <laughs> so, sorry sorry Excuse me, can I just check to see whether we need to go into the exempt um, uh, part of the meeting now? No, I can answer that question without the exempt appendices. Okay. So the, the target, the, the challenge that we have around providing a number um, on apprentices on a contract like this is that an apprenticeship for, for somebody is, you know, kind of two to three years of work experience. When you have a contract that's only about that length, it's, it's very difficult for contractors to say, I would have... I will have an apprentice or or something. Also, the, the way the trades often um, work is that they can't complete their full apprentice on our types of works. Maybe ours is, uh, for example, an apprentice plumber might get the experience of fitting uh, plumbing within within a property, but not of repair. And so what we generally aim to have is whenever we have uh, a quarter with a million, like uh, we have an apprentice per million, but it, it might, the, the apprentice might change, do you know? So if we've got um, uh, eight million, okay, over 
if we've got two million pounds or three million pounds spend a year, we'd expect at any one time to have two, three apprentices, but they might change. Do you know what I mean? There might be three months of a plumber, six months of an electrical apprentice, because the nature of apprentices, um, apprenticeships, is that they don't get them always completely on our works. Um, and so they have to rotate them. They, the contractors rotate them around um, different programmes. Um, but the what they will offer is that there will be an apprentice per million annual spend. Okay, Councillor Woodley. I mean, I was I was hoping um, for a bit of an elaboration about around energy efficiency. Oh, and sorry, green sorry, steel, to be honest, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, of course. So the energy efficiency works that we will do in these kind of schemes is largely if we, so we'll go in, we'll do qualifying kitchens, qualifying bathrooms. If there are urgent works that we will see around damp and mould, they will attend to those because they've been doing what's called a HSS or S surveys, which is, I can never remember the, what that means, but it's a health and safety rating system. And we do assess for damp and mould in those. Where we do the heating upgrades, um, we also add time and temperature controls we will not do more extensive energy efficiency upgrades within this contract and the reason is that the more extensive ones that we can pursue we have a separate program which is uh, currently in procurement and i may indeed be back here uh, in a month's time with a separate contract and um, for works under what's called the social housing decarbonization fund so our bigger opportunity that we're pursuing at the moment in terms of um in terms of energy efficiency is via that funding but where there are necessary works to be done that will improve the energy efficiency we will do them via this contract so i think the main um ones would be if there's identified damp and mold that that would be treated um and through where heating upgrades are needed yeah. councillor woodley oh, sorry councillor kennedy um, thank you. Yeah, I do want to ask some uh, about the exempt appendix, but not yet. So for the public bit, um, I'd just like to understand the Fusion 21 framework a bit better because um, it, I don't understand why we asked contractor A before we asked contractor B. You see what I mean? Yeah, no fair enough. So we didn't actually you so Fusion 21, there, Okay, let me start. There's loads of these different external frameworks. There's a lot of different suppliers in the market who will set up these frameworks with kind of basic specifications and pricings, which you can draw on um, for these kinds of, of contracts. There's uh, a reason why we don't use them all the time is generally it's considered that it, it's not within um they don't fully cover off the leasehold consultation piece and so we use them really only when we have non-leasehold rechargeable works and this contractor c is via fusion 21 the first two contractors we actually approached via a different framework um but in all of them in the direct award process uh the process is the same so you go to the top ranked company on the framework and you when when it's a direct award this with frameworks you can either direct award or you can mini tender we decided to direct award and we test pricing so we went to contractor a on a different framework we you know you use a framework form you ask are you interested in this work um it's it's an expression of interest stage and and they said no they weren't interested in the work we then went to the second place on that framework we was spent quite a bit of time with a second place contractor who said they were interested but um they submitted some some additional pricing uh rates in and above what the fra original framework rates had been due to um exceptional inflation and issues in the market with pricing um, and eventually we reviewed that with an external cost consultant and we decided that it wasn't really value for money um, and so then we went to a different framework because it just seemed like that that framework wasn't quite working very well um, or wasn't really yielding the results we were hoping to to get and it seemed like perhaps the base pricing was too different to the works we were doing so, so it was kind of yielding these different results um, and um, we went to the Fusion 21 framework um, and that contractor submitted pricing which our, which our cost consultant said was you know represented kind of market value for money um, and so we put forward this um, and so that's how how the, the sequence kind of came about. Thank you.
Okay. Um, so can we uh, agree to uh, exclude the press and uh, public? In a, I'm going to read out a bit. In accordance with um, to consider exempt items 10 and 11. Uh, on the grounds that it is uh, likely in the view of the nature of the business to transact that there were members of the public to be present, there will be disclosure exempt information as defined by paragraph 3 of Schedule 12A to the Local Government Act 72 as amended. Agreed. Great, thank you. So, um, 